Good morning. Good morning, you guys, and welcome to the Good News Sunday Show. This is Sonia, and I am your host. And it is the second Sunday in June. As a matter of fact, it is June 11th, 2017. And being that it's June 11th, 2017, this is the Sunday in which we read, pull some books from the reading closet. And I joy to do that. So, the books that we're, we'll be reading today are <clears throat> Real Artists Don't Starve by Jeff Goins. Put Your Warrior Boots On by Lisa Whittle. And I Am Number Eight by John W. Gray. And we never, 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 never forget the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God. And this week, this month, we'll be reading some verses from the African Study Bible. So, I'm very excited about that, and we're just going to get started. So, first of all, we're going to read from I Am Number 8 by John W. Gray. And I believe John is a member of the Joel Osteen um, pastoral group is who, I, who he is. So I'm just going to open it up and we're going to read a few paragraphs. Okay, so actually we're on page 72 and the bullying against me or someone else hurt me deeply and for quite a while I was really young. But over time, I became very thick-skinned. I learned to use this emerging gift of communication of mind to deflect insults. <clears throat> Excuse me. My mother used to teach me that if someone said something about my shoes, then I should respond with, Yep, you're right. We don't have a lot of money, so this is the best we could do. Or if they talked about my teeth, I should respond with, Yeah. I do have a pretty messed up grill and it worked. My response would disarm my bullies. Before I knew it, the people who were trying to make fun of me had no more ammunition and that left them wide open. I'm not proud of it, but I would take my mom's advice much further than she probably would have wanted me to. When my bullies were disarmed, when they didn't have anything else to say, I would clap back with a scathing insult to defend myself. If they tried to come for my teeth, I would give my mom's response first, and when they grew quiet, I would say, yeah, but your forehead is the size of a small country. This was the beginning of my ability to verbally spar with my bullies. It was also the raging warrior in me emerging. More on that a little later. Isn't that interesting? Um, John W. Gray talks about the bullying in his life in his first book, I Am Number Eight. I bought this book because the cover drew me to it. I, I think it's so interesting. And um, he's saying something that's never been said before. I Am Number Eight. So you can find this book at bookstores everywhere. John W. Gray, I am number eight. Next we have Put Your Warrior Boots On by Lisa Whittle. I am on or was on the Lisa, the launch team for this book. So I was able to see the inside inner workings of the launch of this particular publication. So I'm just going to open it up and read a couple of paragraphs from Lisa's book. I will rise up and stand firm. Head down and sweating above the upper lip, I am standing in my kitchen, chopping at ground beef with my spatula like a fool. If anyone comes in and sees me, they will think I have lost my mind over browning meat. But today, I have heard news that breaks my heart. The tears are close. The news has made me angry. One of my son's friends, a boy who has come, grown up coming to hang out at my house, has been kicked out of school for selling drugs. I love this boy. 
I call him one of my babies, though he towers over me at 18. He's a boy who smiles and calls me Mrs. Whittle and says yes ma'am and no ma'am when I ask him questions. I know he had a tough life. I know he missed his dad who died too young, but I didn't know drugs had lured him. You cannot have that boy, I say out loud, tears now rolling down my cheeks. I am talking to the stove, talking to the devil. I know he's the one who's after him. I know he's been breathing down his neck. I know he wants to steal a good gift, a good gift from his life, kill his potential, destroy his mind and his relationship with God, and break his mother's heart because this is what Satan does for a living. That's right, y'all. That's what Lisa says in her book. <sighs> Satan steals. That's his job. And that's what he does for a living. Some really gripping words from this widow. Um, I had not read that passage before, so it strikes deep at my heart since I have a son that will be 18 next month. And of course, I have a black son, so that makes things even a little more tougher. Thank you guys. And next we have Real Artists Don't Starve and this book, I was also on the launch team for this book. I did however buy 12 copies to give away and to promote um, and this book has inspired the inc creativity in me. Um, I thank and appreciate Jeff for saying what no one else has had the nerve to stay, say on the cover of a book. These are really strong titles that we're looking at this week and it takes really strong people to drive these messages home and I appreciate and love them. So, Jeff Goins' book, page 94. Great work does not come about through a single stroke of genius but by the continual effort of a community. A network is your insurance against anonymity. The greater access you have to influence people in your field, the further your work will spread. Of course, you have to be good, but being good is not enough. Skill gets you in front of the right people. But network magnifies your reach. Creative success then is contingent on your ability to connect well with those who can vouch for your work. It doesn't take a lot of people, just a few friends. As Hank said, you don't need an army, but you need a network. Some really strategic work, words from our friend Jeff Goins. And finally, the African Study Bible, which I was on the launch team for this book as well, but it was over a year ago in May that we worked on launching this beautiful Bible. Now, it is the NLT version of the Bible, so that means that it's a thought-for-thought thought translation, which we need to keep in mind as we read. Okay, so I'm just going to, once again, turn to a passage in this Bible, this book, and read what our Lord has to say. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? I'm sorry, I am reading from Isaiah 53. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance. Nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God. 
a punishment from his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep in silent before the shears. He did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong, and he had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. So that is a passage from the African Study Bible. Um, a new Bible, which I'm most grateful to have for being on the launch team. So, this is, we're coming to the close of the Good News Sunday show for today. And I thank you for joining us. And look for us pulling something from the reading closet next, sun, next month, the second Sunday of each month. So, the good news is, the good news is we still have time. We still have time to study the Word of God and glean in and dig deep and align ourselves with His Word. This is Sonia signing out for the Goodness Sunday Show. Thank you.